on 22nd November 2022, Manchester United announced in a club statement that Cristiano Ronaldo would leave the club by mutual agreement immediately. This was imminent after the uncensored interview he had with Piers Morgan, where he brutally criticized the club and the manager Eric Ten Hag. This started speculations as to which club Cristiano was going to join. In the end, he made the decision to join Saudi side Al Nasser. Cristiano Ronaldo has been a world class player for ages now and is certainly one of the greatest players, if not the greatest. Before rejoining Manchester United in 2021, he had been the superstar at every club he played for Manchester United, Real Madrid, Juventus. And between 2006 and 2021, he didn't have a single bad season. In fact, he was so good that scoring under 40 goals a season was considered disappointing by his extremely high standards. Unfortunately, even the great Cristiano Ronaldo is affected by aging. Broken, so old. Why are you doing this to us? And seemingly, the aging process hit him quite hard in 2021. While his comeback season at Manchester United wasn't by any means terrible, it became clear to everyone that Ronaldo wasn't the same player he had been before. He wasn't as productive as before, he wasn't as rapid, and even his style of play had changed massively in just a few years. After the disappointing 2021-22 season, Ronaldo wished to leave Manchester United, but not a single European top club wanted to sign him. Ronaldo was getting older and most clubs were no longer willing to sacrifice their system of play to suit 37 year old Ronaldo's style. Ronaldo has a big ego and above all else he cares about his legacy. He wants to be remembered as the GOAT who wasn't mediocre at any club. The 2022-23 season at Manchester United was an absolute nightmare for Ronaldo and even his World Cup performances were poor. To make matters worse, his eternal rival Lionel Messi won the 2022 World Cup and in the eyes of many football fans Messi had finally settled the GOAT debate by winning the tournament. His options after the World Cup were as follows. His first preference was to stay in elite football, join a top team that can enable him to play Champions League football and help him extend his records at the competition. Cristiano Ronaldo offered himself to all the clubs playing in the Champions League but reportedly no team offered him a place except Real Madrid. This information has been pretty much confirmed. Borussia Dortmund saying they too were offered Cristiano Ronaldo but were not interested in marketing at the moment. Real Madrid's offer to Cristiano was a very low salary. The information only says the salary he was offered was much, much lower than his previous salary. I infer the sum should be around or less than 6 million per year, making him earn less than players like Vinicius Jr., Benzema, Cruz, and Modric. The other condition was that he wasn't going to be a starting player. He would be expected to start on the bench most games. Vinicius and Benzema would remain starting players with a higher hierarchy than him. Chelsea was another option. New owner Todd Boyle met with Ronaldo's agent, Jorge Mendes, in the summer as he saw it as a good marketing opportunity for the club. Given Chelsea's goal scoring issues that season, there would be a move to reignite the interest in the Portuguese star. However, with Chelsea looking towards a model of signing younger players, it will not be a move to match the new identity of the club going forward. Chelsea's brief interest in the summer ended as soon as then manager Thomas Tuchel ruled out the idea, marking the beginning of his fallout with Todd Boyle. I've gone into more detail about that in this video right here. If you would like to watch it, I've left the link in the description. His first club, Sporting CP, would jump at the chance of a romantic return, but there is no way that the club would be able to pay his current wages. Speaking in October, coach Ruben Amorim said, Everybody in Sporting dream with the return of Cristiano, but uh, we don't have the money to, to pay the, his, his, his wages. But a club that would have been able to pay his wages was PSG. But then they had Lionel Messi, Kylian Mbappe and even Neymar in their squad. Germany is one of the two big European leagues that Ronaldo has yet to play in. Bayern Munich could afford to take him on and with Sadio Mane injured at the time, they could bring in a new attacker. Bayern could offer him a real shot at winning another Champions League trophy as well as all almost certainly landing him a Bundesliga title. <laughs>
Again, Julian Nagelsmann's style of play could prove to be a roadblock to any move for Portugal's captain. The other option was to completely retire from football in shame. We all know Cristiano wasn't going to do that. So, what other choices did he have? Inter Miami. The MLS club owned by David Beckham would have been a lucrative option for Ronaldo as well as one to aid his profile heading towards retirement. David Beckham had already discussed the possibility of signing Ronaldo. There's rumors out there that you were trying to get Ronaldo to come play for... Yeah. Is that the former Manchester United midfielder, a key figure as owner of the MLS franchise? There was one problem though, and that was Miami was also reported to be exploring the option to sign Messi after his contract expired at PSG. The other option, of course, was Saudi Arabia with Al Nasser. The only serious interest in Ronaldo in the summer came from Saudi Arabia. While a move there would likely present the most lucrative option for him, it would also be a step down in terms of his remaining sporting ambition. Yeah, but we all know he chose them. So, money was the primary motivation. I gotta do it, man. But only after he ran out of options regarding staying in elite football. With no good offers from Europe, Cristiano would have to leave elite football. Being the huge fish in the Saudi pond is a lot more appealing to his ego than ending his career as a journeyman in Europe and furthermore, they were paying him the most. Cristiano has always prioritized salary above anything else when it comes to his contracts. It seems to be a motive of pride for him. We recall that he left Real Madrid because he had made an ultimatum to the club requesting a higher salary to match that of Messi, else he would go. Real Madrid couldn't have realistically matched Messi's absurd salary at the time, so they let him go. It's not to say that he only thinks about money, but it seems to him that the salary is an indication of how much the clubs and the people value him, so his pride won't allow him to take a lower salary. Out of all the offers he received from outside of Europe, he seemed to have picked the highest. His old and looking for a place that will overpay him at a point in his career where he can't get top dollar at any top league or club. In his last couple years in Europe, he had less than stellar performances, with many believing that he had a negative impact on the team. The only challenge for Cristiano would be Saudi cohabitation laws. Saudi laws strictly prohibit unmarried couples from living together. Cristiano and his girlfriend Georgina are not legally married, but they knew the secret to convince the man was to make him feel important. So, they decided to bend the law for him. Saudi made an exception for him to live with his girlfriend and kids. Him and only him. Yeah, I know you thought that this applies to all Saudi footballers. Shock on you, it's only Cristiano. In Saudi Arabia, he is the superstar. He breaks new records and continues to build his brand all while earning over 200 million a year, making him not only the most paid footballer but the most paid athlete. Signing for Al Nasser did not only give him a lot of money but it also allowed him to improve his legacy.